Jazz bringing you a quick new series. This may come in three parts, three episodes. But I'm just going to be aware. I kind of react and read different stories from different sites. And you'll see how I feel about them. I know it's popular, but I thought, I'm really not in the mood to record a game tonight. But I will record something. Because I was reading this. I thought this was really, really funny and sad. So, hopefully... As I go down, it will follow me. Okay, good. Okay, today's topic, or the next three parts, will be people reveal things they did as children that ended up having a huge impact on their parents, which means something as kids they said that really struck true to the parents or offended them so much that they changed their ways, or, for example, so... One of 26, there's 26 of these, so I might break this up into three. Okay, number one. My mom used to travel a lot for her job when I was a little kid, so much that when I once drew a family picture, she wasn't in it. What a kid! Yes, your parent is away a lot, but what a kid! She stopped traveling as much, even though it paid her more. And got a job that was paid less, but kept her at most of the time. I only found out about this a couple of months ago. It made me feel awful. Well, it should, lady. Just because your parent isn't around all the time. If the, okay, okay. Let's reverse this, people. If your parent was not home all the time because they were serious drug addicts, murdering someone, abusing you, it, or meant to be neglectful, then yes, they're crappy parents, but she was doing a job for the family, for you. Okay, okay, I know she felt like she didn't know about this. So I suppose she only apologized late because she just found out about it. So I will give her a little slack. Okay, number two. When I was about four or five, my father would be working in Washington, D.C. from Monday to Thursday. Oh, God, it's one of those went away things again, right? Well, we lived in New York. One day, I told my mother that it was like I only had a dad on the weekends. This shook him so much that he changed jobs within two weeks of him hearing this. And now he is home around 8 p.m. every day. You know, he could have had a decent job. He could have wrecked in the millions. But because he didn't want to be a weekend dad, he felt guilty and changed his job. Wow. Nice job, Super Shiro. And the other guy was named Wells. Wells. Number three. Now, before we move on, folks, I'm gonna think I'm not the best at math, so... 8 and 8 is 16, okay. I would say... Maybe 6 in most episodes, so I'll do a few more here. Number 3. Mine isn't really moving or inspirational or anything, but when I was younger, my parents asked me if I wanted to have a sibling. And I told them no, because I was just thinking in terms of being a spoiled only child since I was young. Later, I later realized that my mom had extreme difficulties getting pregnant with me in the first place. And had always felt pressured to, point, to the point of the pressure to have another child because she thought that I would grow up being lonely without a sibling. She's a twin who has always been best friends with her sister. By me saying that I didn't want a sib to have a sibling, it lifted a huge weight off her shoulders, and she, be and she came out of depression eventually. This one not as bad. She turned her parent, her mother twice around, removed the guilt, maybe without realizing, but it removed the mother's guilt. And that, I think, is great. This is a pretty good outcome. She, like, the mother didn't want another child because she wanted another child. She didn't want her daughter to feel lonely. And, I mean, okay, I cannot say whether it ended great because maybe 
her daughter now would have really liked the sibling. But whatever makes her mother feel happy, you know, if she's doing everything for you and, and how hard it took for her to have you, I think that's a really good outcome. Be spoiled the rest of your life. If your mother's not depressed, be happy. That's great. Now on to number four. I broke my arm very badly when I was six. It was so messed up that they almost amputate that they almost amputated. Oh shit. We had just moved from what is CA and what is WA. I'll just say from CA to WA and didn't have health insurance. My grandfather put up his home as collateral for me to have the at the time very innovative reconstructive surgery. I now have a plastic joint, pins, and donor tissue. It's a small miracle that my arm works at all. Ow. Oh. And all of this at six years old. I know this is not the point of the story, but just to stop for a minute. Ow. I would hate that. A lot. I was, guys, when I was a child, I had very low pain tolerance, as I do now. So falling would always bother me. Actually, it bothered me more if someone paid attention to it and was like, since you all know my name is Haley, I will use it for this scenario. Oh my god, Haley, are you all right? That that would bother me because like that just scared me and made me start crying or whatever. And I was one of those people who were, wasn't all that upset until I got the attention. I will confess. But anyway, back to the story. Here's what I didn't know or remember. Only mom and I had moved. I remember dad had stayed behind for work. At the time, he was a pretty popular recording artist. But that's just what they told had told me. They were actually separated. Dad didn't want to quit music drugs. Mom wanted a cleaner, simpler life. When he got the word I had surgery, he drove straight through to get to WA. While here, he decided to stay and get a real job with health insurance. Well, good for him. I will say I didn't like it at first that he abandoned his family for his music and drugs, but he came when his son was hurt, and he made a cleaner life so that was a pretty good ending to a story there because really what couldn't be a better ending the fact that he learned his way and got off drugs it, all, all it took was his son to get hurt but it worked this is funny chubby awesome okay what was the other one from feel it dead uh, okay yeah, the next, the second to last one for this video is from, okay, it's deleted. Oh, this must be bad then. 5 out of 26. When I was a kid, I was hugely impacted by those drinking and driving PSAs on TV. Oh, I know, guy, I, I know. I get really, you know, traumatized by them. It scared me so much that someone could have just have could just have a little bit of alcohol get in a car lose control and end up and be, or in, in someone else's life you know that is a terrifying thought and that does seriously happen this affected me so much so that i would not let my parents drink even the tiniest amount of alcohol before we drove anywhere it would send me into a sobbing and screaming fit if they tried to order out anything alcoholic at all while at out at a restaurant wow good for you kid if only more kids were this noticeable and this helpful i didn't realize that the impact it hit it had on my dad until much later turns out he was actually struggling with alcohol addiction and my complete intolerance to drinking and driving forced him to get clean Yay! Yay! Whoever you are, delete it. Yay! You're a kid of the year. 
who you your alone controlled your father's alcoholism without even realizing it. Good for you. Whoever you are, I salute you. All right. We gotta continue to the next page for our last one for this episode. Six of twenty-six. I had the worst fear of the cooties. Yeah, so I have a lot of boys. So much so that I had begun to tell my parents that I would rather marry another guy. This is um thing is I'm straight, but I paraded around the house proclaiming my homosexuality. Little did I know, my parents were majorly conservative and fundamentalist Christians. What? You live in the house, how could you know that? I mean, you were probably a kid having fear of cooties unless if you were a man who was a man child or okay, whatever my point is. But how would you not know that they were conservative Christians? Not no, I mean it. Whatever. And once they experienced love for a gay child, they did a hundred, a hundred eighty, and became a hundred eighty turn and became major supporters of gay rights. Wow! And the sad truth is, he wasn't really gay. Maybe he may have turned out gay with once they started what they were doing, but he was not gay in the beginning. But Good for them. Good Bill the Frill. Twelve hundred thirty-four. I do not know what I'm talking about here, okay? But I'm going to leave the next episode and read on later and show my reactions. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. And I will see you in my next video.